Hello and welcome. My name is Shankar Venkatgiri. I am from I am Bangalore and I'm here to talk to you about data science and AI, our exciting program offering, which lasts almost a year. We started off with a program called Big Data Analytics, which focused mostly on data and analytics. And that ran for a few batches. And then COVID struck. And during that time, we ran a couple of batches which involved people either not being present in the classroom at all or being partially present in the classroom. We here at IIM Bangalore perfected the art of teaching online. It was a completely live online program. And then towards the end, we started looking at a hybrid mode where people who wish to come to the campus could obviously do so. And those that wish to remain elsewhere could do it just fine from the comfort of their desktop. The program is convenient even for people in Bangalore who might decide, well, the traffic of Bangalore today is extremely difficult to get to Banergatta Road where the campus is. They can take it from the comfort of their homes. Of course, this program has had a long history of catering to participants from across the globe. We shall talk about that a little later. <clears throat> Here are the highlights from the previous batch. There are a whole lot of big companies, as you can see. Uh, more than just the companies uh, and the amount of information that they bring to the classroom, it's the interactions between the participants that communicate a lot more value than just listening to a professor. My colleague, Professor Rahul Day and I, we co-direct this program. We are both part of the information systems area. I am currently the chair. We also have a whole lot of faculty from IIM Bangalore contributing to this program. There's Professor Anant Krishnamurti. There's Professor Jitamitra Desai. Both of them are from Decision Sciences. We will be pulling in people from uh, supply chain management, finance, and so on. And we use external consultants in a very big way to offer their expertise as well as teaching to the participants of the program. We have Naveen Bansali who operates his own firm and he talks a whole lot about natural language processing. And so does Dr. Niyati Chaya. She spent a lot of time with uh, Adobe. I will be using an electronic whiteboard so that people across the planet can actually tune into it through Zoom and understand what's going on. Unlike in a traditional video conference setting where there is a mic going around in the room, our rooms at IIM Bangalore are equipped with the audio where anyone in class is always heard. Speaking of the geographies that we have already addressed, we have people in the UK, US, Singapore, Germany, Czech Republic, Arunachal Pradesh and remote areas of Bangalore like Whitefield and Vijayanagar. And we will use a learning management system called Moodle to post everything that is going on inside a classroom. Slides, cases, whiteboard capture, any videos that we're going to be using and so on. We also have expert guests coming in from across the world. This is the beauty of the setup. So we have Dr. Avi Gupta, who currently runs Bubble Insurance, has already sold his previous company, SmartZip Analytics, and is an expert at not only machine learning and uh, such subjects, but also running organizations. Being in a business school means that you have to understand the business aspects of data science and AI as well. Here's the plan for the program. You come in and there is a foundation module. Then you have four solid modules, starting with machine learning, moving to big data, then AI and deep learning, and finally natural language processing. Each of these modules will last about two months. Then you have a live project, which you can actually start maybe after the third module is over and uh, work on it together as a group, uh, after which you make a presentation uh, during the valediction and then you do get a certificate after all.
from IIM Bangalore, which is quite valuable. The program is delivered on Friday and Saturday in a very convenient way. The afternoon of Friday, you come and have lunch and then you've got two sessions. Each session is 75 minutes with a break of 15 minutes in between. And on Saturday, all day, you have sessions. So altogether, seven sessions in a week. And of course, don't forget, every single module will have an exam. So for the exam week, we'll make sure that there's nothing else distracting you, program-wise. The program will have a whole lot of cases, given that we are a business school. Many of them could be from Harvard, but we also have Singapore Management University, for example, and Ivy School of Business. Well, case-based learning may appear super cool, but each case, mind you, is 10 pages of reading and a whole lot of exhibits that you have to kind of weave into your understanding of the case. What we expect from you in return are your preparation and your intense participation in the class. Your ability to integrate all the theoretical aspects and problem solving and such into real life cases and scenarios. Any good data analysis is driven by questions on the data. There is no such thing as a golden approach to the analysis. Now, in the 20th century, data used to look like this, mostly in tabular formats. And people could ask relevant questions, right? Now, in today's times, data can also look like this. This is, for example, a map of I am Bangalore. And there is no structure to this map other than just each of the landmarks having a GPS pair of coordinates. It could be a forest, it could be a building, it could be a road, and there is no such thing as every campus is going to have all of this. Speaking of data, what is the largest Excel file you have worked with? It turns out that Excel has a limitation. Here's the answer. It's about 1 million rows and some change or 10,48,000 rows. Anything more than that and you can forget working with spreadsheeting software packages like Excel. We will work with realistic data sets so coding is important. For example, here is a movie lens data set which has over 20 million rows and that's 2 crore rows mind you in our Indian system. We will work with Python on Jupyter, that would be our standard platform uh, for most of the modules. The very first module is the foundations module. Everyone in data science needs a working knowledge of statistics, calculus, linear algebra and so on. You will also need a working knowledge of the Python programming language because many of the libraries for big data and AI and NLP rely on your knowledge of Python. The foundation module has a quote-unquote break, which is the time that you will use to look at two of the MOOCs that I have taught. And these are Statistics for Business 1, Statistics for Business 2. The second focuses on teaching statistics using the R programming language, which is the other programming language for folks who do analytics and data science. If I gave you a data set like this, does it make a lot of sense? It looks like X and Y coordinates of something. So what can we possibly do? We can look at visualizing them. Once you visualize, you understand that, hey, you know what, this looks like a tubular form of data through which what we can do is to create a best fit and that best fit as you know from your college days is a linear regression fit or a regression line. Having understood that, how do we know which line it is? The intercept and the slope are given by formulas and those formulas obviously depend on the x and y coordinates that you have, right? This is what is called a model, a regression model. 
So data science is a field that is focused on extracting knowledge from large data sets. This is a small one. So we use large data sets, build models and solve problems, problems in the real world. The pillars of data science are machine learning, big data, AI and NLP. Speaking of the first pillar of machine learning, previously we would be given the data, we would apply some rules and then produce the answers. How did we do a regression model? Based on the X and Y values that were given, we applied some formulas and we managed to get the regression model, right? In modern times, we changed the direction. So I have the data. I know that is the line of best fit, which is green in color. Suppose I randomly choose a slope and an intercept. Then I do find a line at the bottom, which is horribly away from the line it has to be. So by a method known as gradient descent, what we are going to do is to tweak the parameters of the line. And let's see what happens in this animation. You can see the line getting closer and closer to what is the ideal fit. Real life data sets these days are gigantic. And to help us process it, two factors are important. Storage as well as computing power has become cheap. One such approach is called Hadoop, which we will learn in our uh, big data module, which is the second pillar, if you notice. So there's machine learning, now there's big data. Marry the two and you have magic happening. What kind of magic? So the time it takes to process two years worth of data at Visa International, which is about 70 billion rows, reduced from one month to 13 minutes. And this was 10 years ago. So you can only imagine what it is in today's times. Right. And to make it even faster, you have what is called Apache Spark, which allows you to do everything in memory because memory itself is becoming cheap. So big companies like Visa and Google and so on, they can make the switch from storing data on a hard drive to storing data entirely in memory while processing. And the fourth module is the much awaited AI or artificial intelligence module. So what is AI? Technically, AI is automating any thinking tasks that we humans perform. And uh, a subset of AI is machine learning, which we just spoke about. The problems that machine learning algorithms typically tackle are based on tabular representations. Now, one subset of machine learning algorithms is deep learning, which is the foundation of what we call AI, right? So deep learning data is much richer than traditional machine learning data. You have video images, audio, and so on. Uh, you have outcomes like the ability of an Alexa to translate text or a Tesla car to drive itself. The foundations of AI are currently neural networks, which try to mimic the brain, not fully though. So the question that I have to ask you is, how many neurons are there in a brain? And I will let you figure that out through a simple search. Let's take up a problem that is basic to AI. So if I were to show you this and ask how it appears to a machine, most of us would be quick to say it's a four, but for a machine, it's not a four. It is this on a gray scale between zero and 255. So it doesn't look like a four, does it? So the challenge becomes if you have this matrix, in this case, a 28 by 28 matrix, then I am going to ask you to match it to a number between 0 and 9 and the answer ideally should be 4. 
So how do you make a machine learn patterns like this? That is the crux of many of the algorithms, the classification algorithms in AI. In our final module, we go over the exciting area of natural language processing. So prior to 1990, this was the latest state of NLP. Everything was a word cloud. For example, in this case, uh, this is Shakespeare. So you can imagine 16th century uses of words like does, doth, heart, so on. And uh, in modern day times, we have chat GPT. So we now did a really serious experiment of asking chat GPT to come up with a poem on natural language processing. So what did chat GPT do? It said, yo, listen up. I'm talking about NLP, natural language. It's the way to be Snoop Doggy style. Snoop Dogg style laid back and smooth, dropping knowledge, got that linguistic groove and so on. So if you're looking for words to flow, NLP's got the rhythm, just let it go. In the language game, we stand tall, Snoop Dogg and NLP, we rule it all. Chat GPT just made it up based on what it thinks is the personality of this great singer called Snoop Dogg. The technology behind it, as we all know today, is LLM or large language models. We'll talk about NL LLM. We will talk about LLM, machine translation and many, many other things. Finally, we have to talk about how you're going to put all of the concepts together. It can't just come by the exams at the end of each module. The group size is recommended to be over four. And I would prefer that you work on a cloud service like Amazon, uh, web service or uh, Azure or Google Cloud. You can work with your companies to source a problem and work together as a team. Uh, it would be even more ideal if all the team members belong to the same company so you can uh, do that in confidential terms or if your group members are coming from different companies then you can think of signing on an NDA and doing the same. There are other ideas as well. There could be Kaggle contests. The last year we had an NGO give us a problem. People did a fantastic job of it. So there are several different ways of working on a project. I hope you're going to go now look at the website and enroll.